Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for a Build Your Stash and Craft supplement video. I was requested by Lori L. to show how to use the Fiskars cutter. She's having some problems with it um, because of the measurements and because of um, the, the way that the bar here does not have the numbers um, where you can see them very well. So I'm going to run through a few things that I do with mine. I'm going to do as much of it as I can sideways like this so that um, you can see the whole thing. But um, the first thing is the markings on the ruler. Well, we'll start with the markings on the plate. Okay, she had a question as to why there are two one-inch marks on the plate. And the reason that they do that is if you need to cut something that let's say you want to make inches, which are one by one little pieces of art. And so you want to cut one inch by one inch. If you have this long piece of paper and you put it in and you're going to line it up with this one inch mark, you've got all this extra sticking out over the edge here, where it is if you use this mark here, you've got a larger platform for your paper to sit on and then if you open up your ruler, um, that also kind of gives a place for your paper to sit. So you can line up with this one inch mark and it will cut one inch off this side of your paper. Otherwise, if you line up with this one inch mark, you're gonna line it up like this. And like in this case, I have something in my way over here, so I have to bend my paper. Whereas over here, I don't have to. So I can put it lined up with this one inch mark and make sure that you always butt your paper up against these top pieces here that's what's going to keep it straight and so I'm going to go with one inch and also butt it up against the top and also look at your lines that run here up and down um, and make sure that your paper lines up with that also if your paper does not line up with that then either your edge at the top is not straight and so therefore it's crooked up here or this piece of your paper is not straight and you'll need to straighten it up but see, we can do it like this and see how this is hard to hold down as I put this flap down. So I have to come over here and hold it and put that flap down and then put this down to cut my one inch. And now that's not bad. You know, I mean, it works, but it just makes it a little easier if you do it on this side, line it up against the top and line it up with your line. And it's just easier that way. And then also, if you're doing inches, it's easier to just go ahead. Now, if you're doing something that's really small, it's hard to line it up at the top and, you know, and really get it where you want it. I usually, if I'm doing something very small, I line it up at the one inch mark. And then I just line it up with one of these lines that goes across. That will also keep you straight. So then I just line it up like this. And I can just cut one inch, one inch, one inch, and it goes very fast. Just like that. So that's why there's one inch marks on both sides. Now also, because I make twinchies quite often, um, I actually used my ruler because what we have here is we have one inch here, and then we have three quarters. I wanted two inches. So what I did was I took my ruler and I lined up with this line here and then I just came over at a quarter of an inch just like this and I just put a mark at one quarter of an inch. I came down a ways, put a mark at one quarter of an inch, came down a ways and put a mark in one quarter of an inch from this line one quarter of an inch over. Whenever I measure anything, whenever I measure to draw a line, I always make at least three marks. On this one, I think I made four or five marks. Once I got those marks on there, I lined up my ruler, and actually I opened this up, and I lined up my ruler on all of those marks, just like this. And this ruler is a little bit long, but this is the ruler that I used. So I just kind of put it in there, lined up all of my marks, and then I just took a black permanent marker, ran it down my line, 
and now I have a two inch mark. So I can cut very easily two inches, two inches, two inches, feeding in from this side. And that is to make twinchies. These are twinchies. And I made a whole bunch at Christmas time because I made some little matchbook earrings. And these fit perfectly right on top of my matchbook. So I needed to make quite a few of them. And so that just made it easier for me to feed in this way versus trying to feed it in this way. That's all preference. You don't have to have these marks over here, but they do help sometimes. Sometimes you'll just find out that you want to measure from this side instead of this side. As far as the marks on the handle go, you can't see them at all. Now, you can see mine because I've marked them and they're already there. So, But what I did was, again, I used a permanent marker and I just went in and I made a mark at four, five, six, seven, all the way down. And then I even took my marker and very carefully, because these are raised, I very carefully just went over the top of each number so that the number would show up so that I could see them. So then I had my marks. Now on here you'll see I have a red mark here and I have a longer black mark here. This is four and a quarter, which is half of an eight and a half by 11. So if you have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, if you wanna cut it in half, I can just line it up with this red mark and then cut it straight in half and then I want to cut it in half the 11 inch way. That's five and a half. I line it up with my long mark and I just line it up there and zoop. Then you've got even equal pages and I do cut my papers that way quite often and that is why these marks are here and they're more prominent because I use them all the time. That way I don't have to look and go, okay, there's five and there's five and a half. I also did mark my half inch marks um, because that does help. You could mark your quarters if you want, and the thing is you could mark your quarters in a different color. You could mark your halves in a different color so that you know that your, let's say your half inches are red and your full inches are black and your quarter inches are blue. However you would like to do that. But I would suggest if you have one of these to mark your ruler, it will really save you a lot. And my eyesight's not that great. And when you do it, you almost have to tip it to kind of see those numbers, so at least this way it helps. Now, if you use the centimeters part, well, I hate to say it, but it's a lot harder because you've got so many numbers on there. But it's you can do it the same way, it's just gonna take you longer. Um, but, so that is how I use my ruler, is I mark it. And, you know, take your time, do it carefully, you only have to do it once. And, you know, so you wanna make sure that you get it right so that you're not off when you're going to cut your paper. If you make a mistake, this is a black Sharpie permanent marker. If you make a mistake, and now I have, I did these a long time ago, right when I got my cutter. And if you'll notice, the 15 doesn't have any marks on it. And what I did was I wanted to know if even if that had been there for a long time, if this would work, and it does. But if you make a mistake when you do it, you can erase that mistake right away by just using rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol will remove permanent marker. And so you just take your rubbing alcohol and we'll just remove this 14 and a half inch mark right here and you just rub on there until it's gone. Now my 15 actually, like right down in the grooves of the 15, the permanent marker is still kind of down in there. You know, you can really work to get that out, but um, you know, I didn't really bother. But there we go. Now, I made a mistake, let's say, and so I, I washed that off. Now you want to let it dry so that your, your permanent marker is nice and solid. And then just go in there. And I have to tip it so I can see. Okay, so here's 14 and a quarter. Here is 14 and a half. And here is 15. And then I'm just going to write on top of that 15. just like that so now I have my 15 inch mark so that is the problem with this and that's how you fix it that's the reason that you use why you may use the two ones and you know if you make a lot of twinchies you may want a two inch mark out there um, you know and like I said if you make a mistake with that use your um, rubbing alcohol and get rid of it now if you have I wanted to just show you a few things about doing it oh you also want to know how to change the blade 
to change the blade it has this little um, lock right here and you just pull that lock over and then this will lift up once that lifts up there's your blade it has a spot here that's solid plastic and a spot here that's plastic where you can put your finger because even if you're changing your blade that blade could still be sharp also when you put in your new blade you want to be careful and so you just reach in there and it just comes out at an angle and you just take this one out then you take your new one and you just slide it right back in there again until you hear it click then you put this down until you hear it click and now you've got your new blade in there if you're because sometimes this line where the where the cutter runs and when you first get it there won't be a line here this line is from cutting and cutting and um so but after a while your um, blade will put a, a mark in here and sometimes this gets a little bit clogged up with paper so if you're cutting your paper and there's a spot that doesn't seem to cut right or there's a spot where it gets kind of jaggedy or something take either a little stick pin a needle a toothpick even the edge of your fingernail um, and just run along that line just to clean that out and then just get that out of there and sometimes in the spot where it's really bad you may have to go over it a couple of times to get all of that what happens is paper gets stuck down in there and then when you're cutting it doesn't cut well in that spot so if you have a spot that's not cutting right that may be your problem it may not even be your blade now this piece of paper here I cut with scissors and I'll put it on here so we can kind of see it and on this piece of paper none of my edges are straight every single one of them is crooked so how am I gonna you know in order to get this into a square piece of paper what you're gonna do is you are just going to put it on kind of eyeball it and cut one line now I don't know if there's a really good way to do this first line I don't know of one but once you cut one straight line then what you can do now that you have this straight line, now you can line that straight line up at the top. And you can't, remember, you can't line it up down here because this one is not straight. This is the only one that's straight, or this one is the only one that's straight. And so then I'm going to cut this one off. And now both of these lines are straight. And again, make sure that you line this up very nicely across, sorry about that, right across the top of your board. Get that up there nice and flat. And just remember to always turn it so that the side you just cut is what you're placing up against your, your straight edge. This is the edge that help. this is what helps you get a straight edge. And so there we go. Now I have cut all four sides. And now all four sides are straight. And this piece of paper now has right angles on it. Um, you know, it's not a square. It's a rectangle. But I still have straight lines all the way around. Now if I need to cut a certain size, now I can do that. I know all of my sides are going to be straight. So if you've got uneven paper, that's how you do it. You just have to get yourself a straight edge. Once you have a straight edge, you can put that straight edge at the top nice and straight and then you can cut it and you know get rid of anything else here that's crooked and then you're going to be able to cut what you need so i think that that is um everything that i have with this um that's how you get your marks so that you can read them how you change the blade how you clean your i don't know if you call it a gutter or whatever but here where your razor is and how to cut a straight piece of paper if your paper's all crooked so thank you very much for watching Lori. i hope that helped if it didn't help or if you have any more questions just let me know and i'll try and answer them thank you all very much for stopping by thanks for watching and i hope that you all have an outstanding day bye bye